And my cell phone. Do you want me to give you my cell phone number? Yep. If you're if you're, yeah, if you're okay with it, reach out. Yeah. Um, they can email me for the cell phone. Number. Okay. There might be some people that are putting me in plenty of fish.com or something. <laughs> Only fans. <laughs> the only I'm not disciplined enough for OnlyFans. If it doesn't, if I don't get a hundred grand overnight, I'm out. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Chicks in Charge Automotive Edition. I am Jess. I'm Shasta. And today we have a very special guest for you. She is known in the industry as the CRM queen, Miss Stacy Ellison. Hello. Hello and welcome, Stacy. How are you doing today? I'm well. How are you, ladies? I am doing well. You have been a very busy woman lately. Yes. Always busy, always, always up to something. So tell us, for those that are listening that don't know who you are, give us a little bit of your backstory and how you came into automotive. Um, so I live here in West Virginia, um, where you either work at a car dealership, a fast food restaurant, or a hospital. I did the fast food for three years in high school, not cleaning up somebody else's vomit. Mm-mm. So I answered an ad for an appointment center in a call center when minimum wage was $3.15 an hour. Wow. And I'm like, I'm just going to do this till something else comes along. And you know, when I started, we had no CRM. It was me and another girl in a room with one of those dirty, nasty white folding tables that the sales guys ate their lunch on. We had a couple of phones. We had five subject notebooks. If the, the managers felt like it. When a lead came into their email, they'd print it out and run it upstairs. So I was, but other than that, we sat up there and played board games and mm-hmm. for about two months uh, applied for other jobs. And then we had a trainer come in. We got a CRM. We got word tracks. And we were like, oh, we're supposed to call these more than one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What do I do now? <laughs> um, so once we were properly trained, um, and that, that was 16 years ago. And uh, the other lady I was initially hired with, Keisha, she still does this to this day, too. She's a BDC manager across the nice. country. Oh, awesome. Um, it turns out we were really good at convincing people to do what we wanted over the phone. That's not a good skill to have. Not you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it, I enjoyed it. I learned how to enjoy it. And that's that's just where it went from there. That's That's it. You know, what's crazy is that there's still so many BDCs out there that are put in that exact yes. same position 16 years later. Yep. They're yeah. literally just plopped down in front of a computer saying, do this thing. Here's your headset. Figure it out. Yep. And then they are ostracized, talked about, and fired when they don't get it. Right. Oh, my gosh. The amount of times that I've heard that, and we were talking quite a bit offline about um, when dealerships reach out for help because they think their BDC is struggling and they say things like, my people suck or I need you to do this. I I need you to get them to do it. Yeah. And so it's not that it's you haven't properly trained them. Mm -hmm. And it was a topic that I was talking about not too long ago when um, somebody mentioned uh, there was a Facebook post and we did a panel on it not that long ago. Um, about why would you outsource yes. um, and how could an outsource team outperform a trained in-house team? And I'm like, that's the problem. They're not trained. Yep, um, and so training, if you put as much time and effort into training your BDC manager as you do training your sales manager, mm-hmm. we wouldn't be having the problems we do. And companies exactly. like ours wouldn't exist. No. No. And that's fine. Like, I got other things I can do. I don't have to be doing yeah. right. 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 I would. I would prefer we not have to exist. Right. Yes. But companies like yours are also such an asset for those wonderful leaders, those great managers who are like, I know I need a BDC. I don't know anything about it. Help me. I yeah. love those kind of people. 100%. And we have dealers all the time that call us and they're very transparent like that. I know yes. I need this thing. I don't know the first thing about it. I don't have the capacity to learn. So that's why I'm calling you. And yes. hiring somebody with experience is so hard. It's so hard. Yeah. Almost yeah. impossible, depending on the market that you're in. Oh my gosh. And or if, even if you're not going to relocate them and if you're trying to hire somebody within your own market, it's it's nearly impossible. No. 
because you don't know where they've been before, what habits they picked up. Are they going to come in and tell you guys, well, I'm not last dealer. I used to do it that way. I've heard that a million times. And I was like, well, with all due respect, I don't care. Um, yep. Moving forward, this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. And then even a well-trained BDC, right? You guys, I go, somebody goes in and just, just builds that thing like a well-oiled machine. What are they doing when we, between the time we come back? Right. It has to be well managed. 20 times a day. Um, and, and, and I don't mind to help, but there is no, there is no in-house continuing training program in dealers. Sales, BDC, f and it's, it, it's like, here you go. Mm-hmm. And somebody said the other day, why do we have such a high turnover rate? Because we do it ourselves. Stop yeah. blaming the people. Stop blaming the applicants. Stop blaming them. You know, we hire people. We put them in front of videos. We tell them, okay, go sell the F550 and you yeah. better not mess it up when you do the demo. There is no in-house training for this. But we right. don't teach them how to do it, when to do it, or what to do. We just say, go do the thing. Check the box. You know, my dog's daycare who offers grooming as well, they literally are shut down once a month, once every other month to go off for continuing education. Wow. So people who are taking care of your dogs are shutting down the facility, but we can't do it for human beings. And then we complain, can't find good people. Right. But then the question always comes up, how do I find the right trainer? Because everybody sells a good game. We're all car guys. Everybody That's knows how to sell themselves. That's a great How question. do you find the right trainer? You know what I tell dealers? First thing out of my mouth is, why did you not ask me for references? Yep. That's a red flag. That's a red flag to me. Do I want to, like, is this a sign that they're just desperate? And I'm going to tell you, I personally came up with a questionnaire that I asked dealers. And I came up with these questions of the mistakes that I made, right? Take, taking the dealers for the money, taking the business for the money, taking, yep. you know, all of that for the money. And, and I have a questionnaire and uh, I I have to get a log into the CRM because not only am I going to look at the BDC, Absolutely. I want to I see the guy who's stroking my check. I want to see when you last logged right. in. I want to uh, see when the desk managers last logged in. I'm I'm going to I'll, I will audit that CRM for four hours and then I set very clear expectations and I'm going to tell you something that I do that a lot of people don't do. I will not do a contract selfishly because I want it out when I want it out. Mm-hmm. And and, and I, will, I will give a scope of work. I'm like, okay, you want me to do this particular project? This is how long I recommend I work with you. This is what it's going to look like daily, weekly, monthly, et cetera. But on, if, I, if I say six months, a month, three, you want out, I'm going to let you out. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. What am I going to do? Fly out of Florida, hire an attorney and sue? You? No. You know, you know, back to the CRM uh, thing that you mentioned about needing a login. I literally had a dealer yesterday that did not know how to add me to the CRM. Like no clue. Absolutely no clue. So I got one for you. And I did a call with a dealer via email. We're communicating. And he's telling us he was on dealer socket and he needs some help. Well, he gives us a login. It's not dealer socket. Oh no. What was it? It was that one that I posted on Facebook that you commented. You were like, what CRM? Oh, it's actually called the CRM. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's this dealer owner told us three times in an email he was on dealer socket. Hmm. Yeah, that's bad. That is that's bad. so bad. Like how we out of to to say not. we're not. We we were like we we wish you the best. Yeah, um, I couldn't agree. Throw you some prayers and some good juju and go on about the way. Um, bless your heart. <laughs> so if you guys haven't already figured this out already, and I mentioned it in the very beginning of this episode, Stacy is known as the CRM queen. Stacy, how did you get that nickname? So there is a gentleman, and I use that term loosely. Uh, <laughs> Mark, no, Mark Tewart, um, he has been a mentor to me for 15 years. And, uh, you know, Mark, 
has broken records as a GM and, and, um, you know, he does high level financial operations and I did a lot of contract work under Mark and, and I owe Mark so much gratitude, um, for helping me become who I am today. But he, he gave me that nickname because it's my job as a trainer. We have to know every CRM, right? Dude. Um, I will tell you, I'll, I'll, text y'all after this but there are some CRMs <laughs> we will not work with oh same oh yeah I I don't. won't do it uh, I'll, I'll give you some names of other people that do but um when I was fully trained on my CRM right our, our performance tripled so I've seen what a properly functioning CRM can do and, and people who use it to the best of the capabilities, right? I'm going to tell you, I got a, I got a four store group that their stores are literally two miles from each other. Same brands. Their CRM is not set up the way, the same way. I will not, they, they have to have different things. Okay. Okay. Because of the personnel, um, this one does a lot of leasing. This one does not. Okay. So no. I just, I, it's like a giant puzzle for me to where 25% in, I'm like, oh, why did I get myself into this? And then when it's done and you see people actually use it to help themselves make more money and they don't look at it as a burden. Mm -hmm. How many managers have you guys work with that, that, that tell their people the CRM is a burden? Oh, oh almost oh, all of them. Yeah. Why would you do that? So I, I, I think it's sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm glutton for punishment when I'm like, I can change their minds. I can let them see how great it is. And then in comes Mark Tewart with the best advice I've ever heard. He said, Stacey, you can't put in what God left out. You're driving yourself crazy. So I try. I try to get everybody to see how great it is. And then um, I, I, I've learned to listen to that little voice. And, and I'll walk away when it's time to walk away. Yeah. Yep. I'll give you a hundred percent, but I can't lay awake at night because you, have you, know, right. that you don't want to do. Um, and I'll walk away when that little voice tells me it's a behavior issue. Mm -hmm. If it's a training issue and maybe the light bulb hasn't gone off just yet, I, I, I will. I've, I've got someone I'm literally working with every day for 30 minutes. It was my idea. Let, let's do a call every day for 30 minutes. And the light bulb went off. That's fine. But these behavior issues trickle from the top down. Yeah, um, yeah. There were a lot of things that happened in my dealership that I did not like, that I didn't agree with and didn't policies, but not one of my employees ever knew that at all. They, they never knew that I thought auto trader leads weren't a valuable asset in my particular BDC. I went in there going, God, we can do this. Look at all these leads we got. And I don't think... We have the leadership and management in today's time that I grew up in automotive with. Right. Yeah. No, it's it's gotten very spoiled. Um, very soft. Mm -hmm. yes. Everybody just waiting for the next person to say, oh, I want to come buy yep. a car. And well, it's and not, we're not selling the appointment anymore. Well, and yeah. truly, COVID did that. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, the inventory yeah. shortage. All of it. Price yeah. hikes. I mean, so much stuff happened over the last several years that made, I mean, and everybody's talking about how the sales got soft. Nobody's talking about how the BDCs got soft mm -hmm. and how we have to go back in and retrain them and teach them how to do their jobs again. Right. And do you know, you guys know how hard it is. You know, I, I'm very flexible, right? I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily make the, the folks I work with use stuff hundred percent verbatim, right? We're very flexible. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Let's rewrite it together. But the one thing I say is you go way too far right or left. I can't reel you back in. And I think that's what's happened. They've went way too far over here and people aren't fighting over the vehicles the way they did when we had the supply. And, right. and I've said this to so many of my managers and, and, and dealer owners will say, my people forgot how to sell. You, you went complacent. It didn't work with them for two years. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to be honest with you. I, I told somebody the other day when COVID hit, I should have went to a dealership and sold cars for seven years, made bank and took a year off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's what I should have done. So I just, I, 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 oh yeah. A leadership issue. We have 
a lack of buy-in with lead handling with, well, think about, with the CRMs. Think about all the promotions that happened during the COVID era. People were getting promoted for virtually doing nothing. their job, like kind of. I mean, they were doing their job, but it was the easiest season ever to do your job in. And so now you're getting promotions and the people that were promoted don't know how to sell cars no. post-COVID or pre-COVID. They only know how to sell cars. I have a specific person in my brain during. right now. Me too. I do. <laughs> I do. I very much do. That is currently in a very high manager role at a dealership because of that exact reason. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, you know, speaking on that topic to elaborate a little bit, I don't believe in seniority. No. One of the best BDC managers I have ever seen in my life, and I'm talking personally, culturally, oh, you want something to drink? I'll go get it for you. Just an amazing human being was only an agent for four months when I told the dealer promoter, she's got what I can't train in. Yep. Yeah. We have, have a manager. We have a manager here that. Yeah, that I would have been in positions for 10 years. It should have been fired nine years and 364 days ago. Oh, yes. I, I don't believe in seniority. I don't care how, I don't care if you've been doing this for two months. If you're good, you're good. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in this. Well, you know, so, somebody said to me on a dealer called me and, and I, this is one that I turned away. They said, we called you number one because you're a woman and number two, you've been doing it a while. And I was like, that's the only reason you called me? <laughs> what does me being a woman have to do with yeah, this? Yeah, I mean, out of curiosity. She didn't say. I, I can only assume. Because she was. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I, I don't think, you know, we need to have a conversation about expectations and, and what you work for me. And like, no, 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 you're a female. And I was given your name. And I'm this was about four years ago. And, and she just couldn't get past that. Mm. Mm. And I'm like, what man hurt you so bad? I appreciate that. I do. But. Um, there's also there's also an undertone that women excel in BDC over men, and I I don't know that that's necessarily true. I, I agree with that. The more women take than men, right? Yes, I, I'm going to tell you one of one of the best BDC reps I've ever seen in my career. Um, did ten years in federal prison, his whole early twenties. Preach. Yep. Um, he, he he came to the interview and he was a, a, a beast of a man, right? And I'm asking the dumbest interview questions of this guy. It sounds like, it sounds like, like Isaac. Guy. Yep. Right. It's Isaac. I'm like, can you follow directions? And he's like, <laughs> man. And I'm like, okay, that was so dumb. But um, you know, he 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 wasn't in for for harming anyone or, or anything like that. And and he is hands down one of the best team player was in there within his first two weeks taking over calls for veteran agents helping out that's insane so we <laughs> we have a gentleman who is now one of our managers who has a very yeah. similar background was a felon um we interviewed him once and turned, um, him down. turned him down interviewed him again turned him down um on the third time we were holding open interviews and he just showed up he just showed up yeah. sat right in front of us hired him. himself yes. okay where do i start yep shook our hand like, with the greatest handshake that i remember from yes. three four yes. years yes. later and said all right when do i start i'll go i'll go quit my second job right now now keep yeah. in mind robin turned him down the last two interviews he came into so here we are going into robin's him. office thing so we just hired this guy that you said absolutely do not hire <laughs> Yeah, and she was like, "He won't make it. He won't make it." Blah 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 blah. And guess are. what? He's still here. He is yes. still here with us, and he is one of our top managers. But I think yeah. I think you were so right when when you said there's there's oftentimes a stigma on who we put in this BDC, who we don't, and um, and I'll email it to you guys. You're you're welcome to steal it, use it, whatever, edit it how you want. But I because I stole it. Um, there was an article on LinkedIn eight years ago with interview questions, behavioral interview questions that we don't think to ask. And you just have to go with your gut on what those answers are. Mm -hmm. I don't, it, 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 can you show up to work on time? You're going to tell me yes, right? We ask these questions, but nobody takes the time to really do a phone interview, then an in-person interview. And I even do an email interview. I can't teach you how to spell and be articulate and all of that. And, and we forgot how to fire fast and hire slow. Mm -hmm. And then we complain about it. While we're on the topic, 
Um, tell us a little bit because you, Stacy, used to be a one man band, and yes. not too long ago, you brought on a real powerhouse in the industry. Let me we tell you, her. we love her. She is from. She the- loves you guys. That she was from I think so. Volkswagen. I think it was Street Toyota. Miss Courtney Pas- Paschal. Pascal. 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 Um, tell us how you scored that one because that was huge. First of all, she loves you, lady. She texted me right before she was like, good luck with your podcast. Tell the ladies I said I love you, Courtney. Yes. She's just wonderful. And um, I tell people this all the time. I don't deserve her. I don't know why I have her. I I, I think um, if you want my honest answer, God put us in each other's lives for a reason. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't deserve her. She does so many things way better than I do. She um, is just such a top performer and she is so detail oriented. And it has been a long time since I have seen someone care the way Courtney cares. She has such a big heart. Oh my God. I'm I'm just going to tell you, and, and I tell her this all the time. I just, I don't deserve her. She's amazing. One day I'll I'll figure it out. But um, she she does a lot of uh, remote work. Yet she's she's got an on site dealer that she does as well. But she does a lot of remote work. You know, digging through, auditing, uh, listening to recorded phone calls. She does a lot of CRM work. She figured out the Reynolds and Reynolds CRM. Um, that's how good she. That's when I said she has things that I don't have, which is the level of patience, right? Plus, she deals with Brad. Yeah, that's yeah that's, yeah i don't know how she does patience. that one i think i think i think <laughs> god was trouble. teaching her patience he whenever he introduced her to, yes. to brad yes we love him too actually we, do. we, we love do. you brad Bradley. We do. so um she she came on board courtney and i are a a true partnership like i work for her she me. works for me there is no boss there is do we do this do we not do this and i value her as a person and, and her skill set just so deeply i Mm -hmm. I really i i'm just i I haven't been and shame on me but i haven't been grateful as grateful as i am for a human being since i have been for courtney in a very long time no she's she's a steal she's an amazing person um her heart is made of pure gold um if there was i'm diamond i mean i mean seriously i don't know what any dealer i'm so excited because i and not to say that i don't i I love seeing women work in dealerships don't get me wrong but whenever you see somebody like Courtney that is only helping one store and you're like, man, imagine what you could do. Yeah. You could work with multiple stores. And it's mm-hmm. like all of that value is just stuck within that one rooftop. And I'm just so happy to see her expand her horizons and work with you and get to ha- have that same um, effect on every store that she gets to work with now because she has such a light and every dealer should want to work with Courtney. Yes. Yes. She's amazing. She is. For sure. I'm happy to have her. Yeah, she's no, she's phenomenal. Um, so we talked a lot um when we went into this about making your CRM work for you. Yes. Um, yeah. and so there's probably gonna be a lot of people listening to this who've probably never had proper CRM training or even understand what the F that means. Yes. Um so going back to the basics, what is the I would say number one issue that you when you work with a store what's the first thing you got to fix almost every time the follow-up yep yeah right? Thanks. um it's if you and i had a conversation you're my customer and i'll call you invite you into the dealership and you say you know what i'm, I'm out down here in florida i'm actually on vacation laying on the beach shopping for cars but i do have intentions when i get back Why are you shopping for the cars on the beach in florida questions i ask I mean, I, I would be having a pina colada and doing other things. <laughs> I'd be there with you. <laughs> you know, I have gotten that recently and it's so weird. So I know in my brain, Shasta's on vacation. I need to call her next Thursday. Mm-hmm. And then I come in and it's a call, text, and email. So 99% of the CRMs I get in, I tell dealers, well, no wonder your people wouldn't use it. I wouldn't use it either. And then he, here's what I get a lot to where some people agree with me and some don't, and, and that's okay, is hoarding these permissions from people that use a CRM. Dude. If you cannot trust them to reassign a customer, why are they employed in your organization? 
Facts. So you can't trust them to reassign a customer, but you can trust them in a $60,000 car to take a customer on a test drive just because you have insurance. Yeah, because that never hurt anybody. So I have a lot of salespeople with manager permissions. I have a lot of salespeople that sell, uh, that earn the right to mm -hmm. test their own deals. To, so, you know, why are we hoarding all of this? So people get so frustrated with the CRM because they log in and it's telling them to do things that are not relevant. Like call the lead. Why? It's three days old. Mm -hmm. What do I say? Why do I do it? So a lot of times we'll put little notes in the follow-up, you know, hey, you haven't contacted your customer. This is the voicemail you need to leave or, or this, that, and the other. And we just try to customize it to get people excited about using it. And, you know, we ask the, the, the one question I ask is, tell me what is wrong with your CRM. I can fix it. I've got corporate teams at tech support. And when you word the question that way, they'll spill what they don't know. You cannot go at somebody and say, well, you're not doing this right. That, that They will shut down. Yeah. So I just act like I come in, hey, your dealer hired me because it was broken. I logged in and saw it. It was absolutely horrible. I'm here to help. And then they just tell me everything I need to know to, to what to fix it. Right. Well, but the follow-up is constantly a crap show. Yeah. A lot of times salespeople just don't know what they don't know. Yeah. And that's really all it boils down to. And as soon as somebody gets in there and takes the time to sit down with them and show them how to do it properly, it they will self-correct. Of course, that's not all in all cases, as we discussed right. earlier, you know, the lack of accountability after us as trainers get out of the dealership is always going to be a problem. Yes. yes. Well, and if we if we stop to consider for a second um the amount of work that goes into that, and it's not an easy overnight thing. So then therefore training on how to properly use it is also not going to be an easy overnight thing. Right. Who's going to be investing the time in doing that? Yep. I mean, we, we try to make every effort on our end. We'll create a CRM guidebook, create a cheat sheet. If you do this, it's going to do this. It's going to do this and screenshots. And, and anytime we get in a CRM, um, it, it, it's mandatory that the whoever hired us does a, a screen share with us. And then we try to get all of the employees on board, at least with a screen share, week one, week two, and week three. But then, like you said, that's that's all I can do. Yeah, I can't I can't hold your hand forever. Um, something that the building on this, something that has come up recently, and I actually weirdly enough made a Facebook post about it today. Um, what is the new perfect mm. BDC cadence? We've heard a lot of different things lately. Oh my, we've heard everything from 15 days to 120 days to six months. I think that's an excellent question. And I, I get asked this question and I'll tell you, I can't give you an answer. And let me tell you why. One of the things that I look at in a CRM is your average, uh, attempts to contact before we contact, um, your average days to contact and your average days to sell. So if I have a, a dealer, um, let's talk about my Subaru store for just a quick second. That's 29 days to sell. That's the customer base. If I have, if I log into a Ford store or Hyundai or Kia or Chevy and it's 29 days to sell. Y'all got a problem. They increase your follow up. Right. So I look at those metrics and then I kind of audit a couple of leads and I look at this and, and I, I kind of sit down and then I give myself a breather. And then I come up with a good cadence plan based on that store's data. So the dealership needs to be in tune with their CRM, with mm -hmm. what metrics they already have, their leads, because every lead source is going to be different too. Like some leads, yes. you're going to have a lot of day one buyers. Some leads, you're going to have a lot of day 60 buyers. Yes. Got to understand the journey that your customer is on when they become a lead, right? Yes. Yes. Like those, those free car gurus leads, you, you, they might answer an email in a few weeks. But a website, yeah, leads yeah, really really mm -hmm. so I, I just, I just kind of poke around and I know this sounds really, really silly, but I pick my cadence on what my gut feeling told me. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's, that's funny because the, the one comment that I saw in that post before we came in here said something around the same thing. Like it, it's, it depends. 
Yeah. Every store is different and you've got to, you've got to know that store. And I, it's funny, we were talking about it yesterday. So when she's pitching dealerships for us, she's, she's normally telling them we've got a 60 day cadence and I've changed it so much. I'm like, all right, we got to stop saying that. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know that I have a 60 day cadence on any of the stores anymore because I've yeah. looked at what they've been doing, what's performing for them mm -hmm. and then adjusted accordingly to where I'm Makes not sense. making pointless phone calls and harassing people right. because right. they're not going to buy after this right. day. So some I, of them are, I do agree with that statement. Yeah. They're, they, I only have two stores that have a 60 day cadence and they're both Subaru. Everything else for, for my stores is typically capped at 45. We're done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I might throw in an auto email at day 60, but. Yeah. There was a time that we did a 90 day cadence and we've slowly kind of backed it down just as, yeah. as we realized that we were putting in so much extra work than what was. I've got a store. I, I got a store. I just moved to 15 days. Yep. Yes. Yep. Because mm -hmm. the contact rate was something else that people have got to be looking at too. Not just the sell rate, the contact rate yeah. after day 15 for the store was less than 1%. Wow. So why waste your time? Right. Mm -hmm. Out of like 15,000 phone calls, there was three appointments because there was like, I don't know, 20 contacts. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, so this is, this is telling to us that we're, how many hours did it take to make 15,000 phone calls? Mm -hmm. How much money did we pay out in payroll? Would that pay back the amount of cars sold out of three appointments? Yes. Save you that. Know, that, also, that we've been looking at this. this, this little piece of data is we go into BDC or internet sales department and we say, okay, start on your tasks, do your phone calls, call these leads, call these customers, right? And these customers in, in their profile, maybe they are interested in stock number one, two, three, four. Stock number one, two, three, four sold. That's a transit van. Mm -hmm. Why are we calling that customer every single day for eight days when we don't have another transit van? Why are we not calling our customers? And, and I call them activities per car. Why am I not calling? the um uh, uh, Ford Fusion, the pre-owned Ford Fusion customer three times a day when I have 10 other four-door sedans I can switch mm -hmm. them to. Yep. Right. Why am I calling my 2025 Forester customers every single day when we don't even have them? Right. So just checking in you don't want to pull up like that too is following up. Make it relevant. If yeah. it, well, the CRM told me to call this. Like, I understand, but that's something that we try to teach to, you know, take a second. It only takes a second. Don't sit there and piddle all day. But if a customer came in on a pre-owned four-door sedan with 30,000 miles and you have seven other ones, that's the one you call three times a day. Stop mm -hmm. calling the transit van lady every day because Vin Solutions told you to. What, what are you going to do? Just to tell her that we, we don't have one? Yeah. So I, I tried to teach people to be a little bit proactive and to look at that additional detail when they do their follow-up. It, it takes critical thinking. And I, I want to say, I mean, it takes common sense too. Yeah. And that's not something that's always easy to teach. No. And I think that we've turned this job. We, BDC trainers, BDC experts, you know, spent so much time trying to get them task-based that we've almost turned it to task-based. Mm -hmm. And we've got to do a better job of of teaching them how to think forward like that. Yes. You know, be viewing the profile. What vehicle are they interested in? What story does this tell you before you even yep. speak to them? Yeah. What can you do for this customer knowing what you know about them? I had a dealer message me last week, text me and was like, Hey, I just ran a report and I think my BDC is dismissing a lot of tasks. And I said, I don't care. I haven't looked at dismissed tasks in four years. I don't care. I'm not looking at dismissed tasks. Maybe they're not relevant. Yeah, I mean, if you're setting your BDC setting 72% appointments to contact with a 72% show ratio, I don't care about dismissed tasks. Right. And I think this is where we're, we're very similar is we know what to look for and when, and then we address it as such. Mm -hmm. So if I have a high performing store, I, with all due respect, I'm not logging in to look at your dismissed tasks. Yeah. I don't care. If anything, I'm, I'm looking in there to see, okay, what are we doing right? Right. Yeah. Can yeah. it be improved from what we're doing right? Or is this the tippity top of, of what we're capable of? What's going well to know how to duplicate it? Yep. But I, I think I think you're so right. We 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 were a hundred calls a day. This is the the 50 50 50 ratio. And and then you know, I was one of those people. Let's let's be honest. I really was. And then COVID happened and we all slowed down and 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 it was like, no, we gotta put a little bit more detail into this. Mm -hmm. We got, I got, a, I got one of my top performers right now only makes 45 outbound phone calls a day.
but she sat in 12 appointments a day via text message. Yep. Why are you going to pick up the phone and say, hey, you want to tell me what you were doing half the day? Not making phone top, calls? My top appointment setter doesn't make any phone calls at all. They're a text only person. Yep. So I, I think you're so right when we, we just got to look at, at performance and these things on individual basis, but instead of this whole cookie cutter, call three times a day, send no right. amount. Well, but we got to think about, I mean, going back to the training of the BDC manager or whoever is running that operation inside of the store. So let's think about how the BDC manager got to that position. They probably started as a BDR mm -hmm. and yeah. then they did so well at their job or they followed directions very well that, you know, when that spot opened up, they were probably looked at for it. But they mm -hmm. still only have the training that they had as a BDR. They still only have the mm -hmm. guide, the rules, mm -hmm. all of the things that they were told. That's all they have to go off of. Yes. Now, say they're in that position for 10 years. The industry changes almost daily yep. with what we have to change, how we have to pivot, how customers have pivoted. And if somebody isn't either pouring into that person or... Um, I don't know, taking them to conferences, letting them meet yep. other BDC experts to be able to bounce ideas off of, to mm -hmm. check in with, hey, are you seeing the same thing over in Oklahoma yep. that I'm seeing mm -hmm. in Florida? Are you seeing XYZ in West Virginia that I've got going on over here in Arizona? Those collaborations will lead to the success of a BDC yep. bar none, 100% of the time. And, and, and I don't know that anybody has the answer to this question because we've all asked it. Why are we treating our BDC managers like the redheaded stepchild in the dealership? Mm -hmm. Don't come to me because your printer is broke. Because they don't know how. The dealers don't know how. And you treat them like crap. Yes. They don't. And they don't use them when they're probably your best kept secret yeah. manager in the entire organization. We know everything. Yeah. They are the front line. They are the very first people to touch your customers. Yet we don't care. We we put them back here in a former janitor's closet with a refurbished laptop and complain when we can't drive traffic. So then at that we point, invest in those people. first impressions no longer matter. You know, we 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 talked about something last week and 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 a BDC manager I work with and she is amazing said, I just don't think my dealer will let I don't think my manager will let me out of the dealer for that. And it was it was I got really sad for her. Not mad, but I said, let me call him. How mm -hmm. awful to not have somebody who's invested in your future. I know. Well, that happens to me at my dealerships. They're, you don't need to go to that. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't need. But here, go to this GM training and do every single thing General Motors tells you to do when you get back, even though nobody there has actually even worked in a dealership. I was about to say, who told them they're yep. the experts in this? So, it's, and I think there just has to be a secret society or public society, sense. whatever you want to call it, of people that support these BDC managers. And if, if they're not being treated well, this dealership, with all due respect, why can't we all come together and find them a dealer that will treat them good? Oh, right? for sure. And to be fair, that was ultimately the reason why we started this podcast. Good for you. I mean, I truly, it, it came because I was in that position. Not, mm -hmm. not that I didn't have training invested in me. I was trying to find the people in the industry who yeah. would teach me, who would answer my questions when I, I mean, I was so thrown into this role. I can't even tell you, like we forced my her. BDC experience <laughs> was literally as, I voted her in. as a BDR years prior. And then I'd been on the social media side of it for so long. And then it was, oh, here, have a, have an outsourced have BDC thing. that has multiple stores, a whole bunch of CRMs you've never touched. Um, there you go. <laughs> Merry Christmas. And so when I'm trying to learn how to, you know, how to look at these templates and processes in the CRMs, you know, because Vin Solutions and Promax are 100% different or, oh, what's Ely? What the hell is that thing? Or, oh my God, dealer socket. Why does this look like nothing I've ever seen before? Right. And so I'm reaching out to anybody that I can think of, like people who claim to be BDC experts in the space. I mean, granted, this is four or five years ago. So my pool was really small. And I was getting left on red. I was, I was getting told, oh, I can't help you with that. And I'm like, that, that's not cool. Like, that's not cool. Why? But why? Because you see me as competition? Like, what? what is this? You know, and I've never understood that in our industry. Right. Never. Can you handle 350,000 dealerships? No. No. I can't. Who could? And I'm going to tell you that the different personalities that we have, there's mm -hmm. some CD trainers, CD trainers out there right now. But I'm going to tell you right now, if his dealers called me, I'm not touching them with a 10-foot pole because yep. the word sleazy comes to mind. Yep, right. So, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I am not for everyone. 
you guys are not going to be for everyone. There's going to be things. I, I've never understood the whole, I'm not talking to them because they do what I do kind of thing. So my face actually lights up when I say, oh my gosh, I'm doing this podcast uh, with um, Shasta and Jess. They they do what I do. Like we, yes. I because don't we understand. I don't, I don't understand this hoarding knowledge. Mm-hmm. It right. is hypocritical. Um, and, and you just shouldn't do that. Right. No. Because if I share something with you, I want you to go use it. Mm-hmm. And you know what I tell people? Don't tell them you got it for me. You use it, make it your own, and take the credit because you execute it. Just leave me alone in the background. And then it makes you feel good and me feel good because even if nobody knows that it came from me, I still feel proud knowing that it did. And I've just, I've never understood that in our industry at all. No. Th- those are the people that don't need to be doing what they're doing. If um, you can reach out and, and help someone or answer this, you know, I, I you don't need to be doing what you're doing. Well, and we were, I mean, we did the the by appointment only um, Anthony Alagonas event, who is a good friend of ours, also runs another outsource BDC and mm-hmm. is an open book anytime we need help. Absolutely. He's one of the good ones. Yeah. Um, we were at that event and I spoke on, um, you know, the bias of of out, offshoring, um, using offshore agents and the, the bias that surrounds it, the... Um, the controversy, I mean, the amount of dealers that we talk to that immediately are like, I don't want anybody offshore. I'm like, well, you're stupid. Why? Accents. Accents. That's it. Yeah. So I, so I had this whole accent, right? (laughs) Right. Like we had this whole, the, I did the whole session. Um, I had somebody reach out to me afterwards and said, you've inspired me to start my own offshore BDC. Um, what can you tell me? And I, I told them that every, what softwares we use, what we use to track them, mm-hmm. all of the things. And I'm like, Hey man, good luck. Like it's an undertaking. It's not easy. I'll tell you what you want to know. I'll tell you all the struggles I came up against, but you're going to have them yourself. Yep. But you know what? That's when I told you guys eight years ago, I had a lot of chaos and turmoil in my life and automotive. It's because I was surrounding myself with those people. Yep. yep. Right. They, they, when they figured out I was not a follower that I could not be manipulated, that I wasn't falling in line with the clicks. Mm-hmm. Honey, they dropped me like a bad habit. Oh, yeah. And it was the best thing that ever happened. Mm-hmm. It was, call Stacy, she'll help you. And I was always the giver. Mm-hmm. But when I needed something from certain people who will post all over social media how they love to help people, it was dead crickets. Mm-hmm. There is a very, very big national sales yes. trainer out there right now that I, within the last six months, reached out to for for help, completely ghosted me and left me on red. And then the only time he has interacted, I'm just giving away that it's a guy, the only time he's interacted with me since then was um, to give him a referral to one of my stores out of nowhere. Right? I'm like, why? And I asked one I'm thing. Sure that. Like, people say... Stacy, do you have scripts? Yep. What's your email? Why are you giving your scripts away? You don't think that the stuff that I would come up with, I didn't take from Stoker 10 yep. years ago? Or right. Come on, man. Did we not all build all of this shit that every single one of us does from something Stoker said? Yeah. It all goes back to Stoker. I know. So, a granddaddy. Our BDC granddaddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's, we'll just call him Papa. <laughs> You know, I just, um, it, it's really disheartening to see because we're sitting here talking about how dealership managers and employee don't help people, but then there's people on our own circle that won't do it either. Mm-hmm. Let's just be, they won't do it. Yeah. Or who will act super nice to your face and um, turn around and talk, talk bad about you behind your back when they honestly don't know anything about you in business because they wouldn't work with mm-hmm. you. I, it's, it's, it's really, it's really sad. Um, I took a step back from automotive conferences for that reason. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we were to figure out why someone came up to me and gave me a big hug and wanted a selfie when I saw the screenshots they said about me six months prior. So I just asked. Mm-hmm. And then all, and let me tell you what happened when, when I asked why you're doing this, it was, you can't say that to her. You, you can't. But she's really nice. She didn't stop making excuses for bad behavior. So you, you and you can go on down the road too. So I was the bad guy. (laughs) Yep. For standing up to myself. Yep. For another female who attempted a gaslight me in automotive. I just asked, Mm. why do you want a selfie when this is what you said about me? 
Absolutely. I wonder if it's the same person. I it <laughs> has to be. We're going to talk about this off. Yes, we are. <laughs> That's very, very familiar. The point is, we all can spare some time to help each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. No, 100%. And that's that's what's going to propel this industry forward. Those of us it's who the have only thing that's yeah, going to propel the industry forward. Those of yeah. us that have moved on to the vendor side and have um, the bosses, the managers, all of that stuff that are willing to pour into us and send us to these events, the good ones where you can actually learn and collaborate with others. Yeah. We want to share that with the people in the yep. dealership who yes. don't have that. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. There like, are resources. Like a support group. Yeah, there mm -hmm. are resources out there available to you, most of which are free. I mean, we have so many automotive podcasts um, put on by friends that oh, yeah. that we have that are good, good quality with really good quality mm -hmm. candidates on the, on the or guests on the show um, that we can send you. I mean, we have there's YouTube videos. I mean, there's some you don't want to watch, but there's there's YouTube That's videos so out there more than you would ever even imagine. There's so yeah. much learning available out there for free. And I guarantee mm -hmm. you, almost anybody, if not everybody that we have interviewed on the show would give you oh. um, a free phone call consultation yep. and probably even help you for quite a while for free. And yep. if they didn't, we might've made the wrong choice and guess on the show. And they will not come back. No. no. Mm -hmm. You because know, I've always we... told people, why would I not email somebody scripts? I know. Like, why, why would I not 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 I've sent somebody. over... I've sent over a cadence and and text uh, text and email library that I built mm -hmm. that took yep. so long to build. I've sent that to dealers just because yep. I'm like, hey, I know how much I struggled with this and mm -hmm. I had to use my marketing brain on it, which you probably don't have. No offense. Um, I'm happy to hand it over to you for free. I've done it a million times. Mm -hmm. BDC managers will call. Those are the worst. The managers that want training and their dealer won't pay for it. They're like, I've tried, I've tried. And I'm like, what's your email address? Yeah. When do you don't want to call? I've been mentoring someone for two years, a BDC manager and a dealer. And I, I don't put this out there, but not once have I ever been paid for it. We do a monthly screen share call and we do this. What? I can't give you an hour of my time for a month and I don't belong in the position I'm in. Right. Yeah. That's silly. Right. I agree. I have dealers that I talk to all the time that I never get a dime from just because. Oh, right. Just yeah. because they're deal, I mean, BDC managers, because their dealers aren't investing the training in mm -hmm. them or the assets in them that they need to be able to do their jobs to the level yep. that the dealer is expecting it. Oh, and for and even just since the podcast has started, we've had people that have seen the show that have reached out to me or Shasta and been like, hey, I have XYZ friend that needs help in BDC or needs help on social. Can you guys take some time to talk to them? And we're like, sure. Like it's whether we do business together or not. Right. Knowledge is free. Like, don't be a piece of shit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Stop hoarding it all. Yeah. It's, that is the, the, the hoarding is what gets me. I don't understand it. Yeah. No, it's, there's Why plenty, are you so plenty. unhappy with yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, especially what, with how what fast, are you so afraid it was going to get stolen? Yeah. It wasn't yours to begin with. It was, 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 Love that guy. Man, I want to get him on the show so bad, but I know that interview would be no less than two hours oh long. Oh, my God. So have you have you guys ever um, spoke to or met? Um, I've only met her one time, Joni. Yeah. So we actually, um, when I first started in the BDC and really needed some help, we hired their company. Okay. I've only got to meet her one time, but I, I really enjoyed her. I and met her years ago, like maybe 2014. I met her years ago. Yeah, I met her at one of the very first women in automotive conferences mm -hmm. I went to. She was um, one of the keynote speakers. Mm -hmm. I want to say maybe at the time she was on the board. Okay. Possibly. Um, so that was the first time I met her in person. And then that was how we got connected to work together yeah. later on. She's good. Mm -hmm. But if yeah. you ladies need anything, call me and Courtney. Oh, no. I'm going to call you. Of I'm course. Just... And please do. Please, yeah. We love talking to you guys. Yes. For sure. All right, Stacey, what is one piece of advice that you could give somebody that male or female that was walking through the doors of a dealership for the very first time looking to ex to develop their career in automotive? What would it be? So I'm going to give the advice, but this advice was given to me by a, a, a former mentor of mine who has since passed, uh, Tammy LeBlue. So what Tammy told us is you better be disciplined enough to block out the, the BS and learn this job, your product, like you were studying, and I quote, like you were studying for a master's degree in college. Mm -hmm. 
Because if you can't be disciplined enough to know that we shouldn't be having a 45-minute conversation at 10 a.m. about what we're going to door dash for lunch when we have things that can make us money, then you're never going to make it. You, you've yep. got to somehow find the self-discipline. Right. If, if you feel you're getting sucked into it, go to the restroom, walk outside. But I think self-discipline is one of the most important things anyone can have to be successful in any kind of aspect of their life. I agree. So agree. that that advice was given to me, it's, it's, it, you know, from her. And that's what I share with other people right now. You got to cut that. it out. I love that. Now, this next question, we don't do this very often, but I'm going to do it today. Who would you like to see on the podcast? Who would I like to see? Let me think. That you feel would offer. You can't say Papa Stuker. He'd be a freebie. Yes. <laughs> you feel would offer tremendous value to others. I, I'm, I'm going to go with Courtney because she she has been on the show. She has been on the show. So let me think of somebody else. Who would I love to? Not see against her? having her again. I know. I would never be. Ag- I would never be against having Courtney again. Um. My gosh, you guys ask a hard question. <laughs> you really do. Um. I would like to see you guys get um, like a director level from a CRM company and ask them the hard questions. Mm. Mm. Whatever that that. would look like. And I know you guys have your contacts, but um, I'm happy to give you mine. All right. We might have to uh, get together and do that. That'd be fun. Trying to think of which one I'd like to start with. I know. I mean, because they they all can sell and get value on their product. Mm-hmm. And I would like to see you ask them the questions you asked me about follow-up and Kana. And, and I just want to see how the answers yeah, different. Yeah, like what their perspective is. the cookie cutter answers. Or, if, mm-hmm. you know. Right. And I'm not going to name a CRM because I don't want anybody to think whatever. But I have a couple in mind that I think would provide tremendous value. Okay. Is, yes, I would love to see you guys interrogate them. I'm, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> but I think that would provide value. I've got a couple in mind. Okay. I love that. I do too. That's awesome. All right. If somebody wants to reach out to you and get in contact with you outside of the show, where can they reach you at? So my email is sellison1150 at gmail. And my cell phone, do you want me to give you my cell phone number? Yeah, if, sure. you're, if you're, yeah, if you're okay, okay with it being on air. Yeah. Um, they can email me for the cell phone. Number. Okay. There might be some people that are putting me in plentyoffish.com or something. <laughs> See, only fans. Uh, <laughs> the only, the only, I'm not disciplined enough for OnlyFans. If it doesn't, if I don't get a hundred grand overnight, I'm out. Right. Um, there you go. I mean, it happens. You know, you're welcome to connect with me on Facebook, but you guys know all you see on my Facebook are my dogs. LinkedIn, I'm over on LinkedIn. Where it's do you a have the cutest doggos? Um, so that's oh. that's where they can reach me. Or you know what? Hound Courtney. Courtney's over on LinkedIn. Hound Courtney. There you go. Yeah. That, that's a fun game. Yep. You think we're ever going to get her over on Facebook? So actually, we had the conversation this morning. She said that she deleted her Facebook in 2012, because I was like, girl, I'm part of screenshotting you this stuff. Yes. Get on here. And she was like, nope, my life hasn't been more peaceful since. And I'm like, the first of all, you're married to Brad. We know that's not true. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, but she says, no, she'll never go back to Facebook. Hmm. Interesting. I don't now, know. Sometimes I'll delete the app off my phone if I'm traveling or super busy, but I don't delete the, like, I'll delete it for a couple of days and then I'll, I'll come back. Over. I always forget she doesn't have a Facebook, so I'll go to tag her in something. I'm like, did she, why'd she delete me? What did I do? And like, oh, she never had a Facebook to begin with. Mm-hmm. Well, so oh, if she can do with Brad, she can do with Facebook. Oh, for sure. Yes. All right, Stacy. Well, thank you so much for taking thank the time you. to sit and chat with us today. This has been an amazing episode. You are the best. You're the best. We love you. We love Courtney. We align with everything that you guys are doing, and we're just so grateful to call you guys friends. You guys are amazing. You you are too. And then reach to me offline. We need to. Absolutely. All <laughs> right. So we'll go ahead and wrap up here. In a world where you can be anything, be kind because you never know what battles others are facing. So while out in the world this week, remember to light it up. 
I'm Jess. I'm Shasta. And that's Stacy. And we've been the Chicks in Charge. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Yay, you've made it this far. And if you want to help the chicks out and add some value, make sure you subscribe right now. Click that little red button down below. Do it. Do right it now. now.